the end result of this is that we live in a time where we can have translations, um, uh, not, not just translations, but we can have different Bibles for different purposes. Um, I received a catalog for the, common Eng uh, for the new um, Common English Bible, and in that catalog are all types of different Bibles for different people, from moms to soldiers, from, you know, and I, I can't understand how a mom and a soldier, I can understand that coming from different perspectives, although I've met some moms that, would, that could take out some soldiers, but, but I, I can't quite understand why they need a different, different color Bible or a different shape Bible or a different, uh, different notes in their Bible. Here's another way of illustrating my point about this, that, that perhaps um, Noel is right that there's a cacophony, but perhaps he's wrong that the cacophony is um, of any value. Look at uh, christianbook.com. I did a study for study Bibles, or a search for study Bibles, and it came up with 1,319. You can have archaeological study Bibles. You can have life application or MacArthur study Bibles. You can have study Bibles for Lutherans or for Methodists or for um, Charismatics. You can have um, uh, end of the world study Bibles or beginning of the world study Bibles. You can have um, uh, just a, a myriad, a myriad of study Bibles. 1,300 and something study Bibles. Do you see the difference between the time when everybody had the King James Version, and may, or maybe one or two others, but everybody had the same translation, and now where you could have the translation that fits what you want it to say, with the footnotes and the end notes and the side notes that tell you what you want to find? It's, a, it's already a polarized time, and yes, again, I hear, what, I hear what Noel is saying, that perhaps the scriptures are not, um, are not uh, have been misused, and perhaps the democratization of scripture is a good thing, but perhaps it's not, or at least perhaps we need to think about how we use the Bible and take responsibility for that ourselves. Noel says, toward the end of his essay, The great influence of the King James Version in American civilization arose precisely because it was so widely available, precisely because its words and what the words communicated entered so deeply into the consciousness of so many Americans. And I'm not doing his essay justice because he really goes through and he, he spends time showing the benefit of the translation. I mean, he, 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 he agrees with how that Bible has been used in the African-American church to positive benefit, and he sees it beyond. For instance, earlier in the essay, he says, from still another angle, the King James Version enjoyed a nearly universal availability. The biblical message it conveyed could never be safely monopolized by any one group or, or, or readers or preachers. See the contrast between today and the multitudinous study Bibles and translations and covers for your Bible? This fact, the fact that it wouldn't allow itself to be monopolized, monopolized, lay behind the all but unfathomable profusion of uses to which the King James Version has been put throughout the American history. It was a reality that time and again inspired spiritual liberation and also sometimes social and political liberation The other American interests that other American interests sought to curtail. When everybody had the same Bible, they could argue about what the Bible said. When everybody has a different Bible, there's no more arguing to take place. He concludes his piece by saying, the great, as I said, the great influence of the King James Version arose because it was so widely available, because um, its words entered so deeply into the consciousness of so many Americans. If in our era, the King James is fading as a universal presence, both linguistic and religious, something foundational is being lost for American civilization. Some of that loss is for the good. Much can only be cause for regret. 